and and everybody um, behind the scenes working for this Jack's Poetry Festival. I'm glad to see all of you here. I'm going to share, uh, I have some slides. We're going to talk about nocturnes and obads. And I had to look up how to say that. I don't speak French, but I think it's pronounced obad. Um, we, uh, just to tell you how we're going to do this, um, because I haven't done this program before, I'm, a, I'm not sure my timing and they want it to really stay under an hour. So what we're gonna do is we'll have a, a couple of periods where we do some writing, so some generative uh, things, um, but we won't share in the first one, we'll share in the second, after the second writing. I do have an exercise for the third, and if we don't get to do it online while we're here, it's something you can do at home. So that, that's how we'll do the session. So let me share my screen. Okay. Okay, can you all see that? Uh, somebody pipe up. Yes, okay. Theo, yes, Theo that's great. Here. Yes, all right, good. All right, I'm gonna get rid of this weird little floating thing up at the top that drives me crazy. There we go. Okay. So what is a, a nocturne or an obad? So let's start with that first little uh, description. They're, they're non-prescriptive forms, which means that there's no dictated specific meter or uh, rhyme pattern or re repetition of a line and no refrains. And that's one of the reasons I like it, because you can really do a lot with uh, free verse in a nocturne or an obad. Um, so they're perfect for that. And what's kind of fun, though, is I find that sometimes when people have a certain amount of restriction and they're writing in a form, it actually frees up some creativity. It's like you don't have to think about what kind of poem you're going to to. Um, Right. It, so it, it gives you some con some constriction, but within that, there's still a lot of freedom. So what we're going to do first is just uh, I'll give you a, show you a couple examples. And so let me go to the next slide here. Uh, for some reason, my slide isn't moving. There it is. OK, here's two short examples uh, by Walt, Walt Whitman. A clear midnight. This is thy hour, O soul, thy free flight into the world, wordless, away from books, away from art, the day erased, the lesson done, thee fully forth emerging, silent, gazing, pondering the themes thou lovest best, night, sleep, death, and the stars. So a nocturne um, was really, let me mention a little bit more about nocturnes. Um, John Donne was the first English poet to employ the term nocturnal, but there had been before that, of course, there was a there's a um, a tradition of Japanese um, night poems and Navajo poems called night chants, and then later, of course, the word nocturne got associated with a musical type. But nocturnes are often poems of the evening, um, settling into the evening. Sometimes there's sleeplessness. Uh, contemplation as the, as the, we see here in the Walt Whitman poem. Whereas an obad is, is another, you know, non-prescriptive form, but it's a song to the dawn. And often it's lamenting the arrival of the dawn because you're having to leave the arms of a loved one. Now, not always is it a love poem, but what determines an obad is its commitment to the theme. It's a poem set in the morning. Um, it's a lament often, it's a leave taking, it can be a love poem. So here's a little bit from one of Walt Whitman's poems. It's a longer one, but I just have the first little bit here. A transparent summer morning. I mind how once we lay such a transparent summer morning, how you settled your head athwart my hips and gently turned over upon me and parted the shirt from my bosom bone and plunged your tongue to my bare stripped heart. Ooh. <laughs> very, very, um, very sexy. Okay, and we'll go on here. Let's go on to the next one. For some reason I'm having a, there it is, having a harder time sliding my slides. This is a more traditional nocturne um, by Eve, Evelyn, Evelyn Boland, the Irish poet. Um, what, 
when I read this, what I'd like you to do is look, think about how specific she is about everything. Every little detail is uh, delineated here. After our friend has gone, I like the feel of it, the house at night, everyone asleep, the way it draws in like atmosphere or evening. One o'clock, a floral teapot and a raisin scone, a tray waits to be taken down, the landing light is off, the clock strikes, the cat comes into his own, mysterious on the stairs, a black ambivalence around the legs of button back chairs, an insinuation to be set aside, to be set beside the red spoon and the salt glazed cup, the saucer with the thick spill of tea, which scalds off easily under the tap. Time is a tick, a purr, a drop. The spider on the dining room window has fallen asleep among complexities, as I will once the doors are bolted and the keys tested and the switch turned up for the kitchen light, which made outside in the garden an electric room, a domestication of closed daisies an architecture, instant and improbable. Isn't that beautiful? A wonderful going to bed poem, a domestication of closed daisies. I love that, okay. And now here's an obad by Alan Gray. So there was a nocturne, here's a full obad. The curtains fill and fall like sails, our beds a lemon sheeted beach. The wind through the window hails, shadows the shade of a peach. I trace the headland of your haunch, the archipelago of your spine, flesh folds like cowrie, cone or conch and coves the color of wine, oh, sexy. Early in the morning when the sun is just the shade of a peach. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we are gonna stop. I have other poems to share because we're going to do things with what you write, but I want you to have something to start with. So I want you to think, uh, we'll spend about 10 minutes, 12 minutes, write a classic about a nocturne, welcome the night, regretfully slide into the day, think about a loved one but concentrate on those central details, the very specific elements like Evelyn Bowen did in her poem, okay? So I'm setting the timer right now and I'll come back to you in 10 to 12 minutes. We'll see how it goes.
Okay, folks. I hope you have something to work with. Um, it's quite okay if it's short. As, as I saw a couple of those pieces I read were, were pretty short, and that's fine. We just want something to work with when we get to the next bit, um, and hopefully to the third little bit as well. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we aren't gonna share at this point, but I want you to keep what you've written because when we get to the second exercise, I'm hoping we will have people who will want to share a little bit. We're not, not everybody will be able to share because of just time, but um, hopefully there'll be some of you who'll want to share then. So let's look at the next little bit. What I like about um, nocturnes in obads is that you can play with them. You can turn them on their head. So that's what we're going to do first. But I want to read an obad and a nocturne to you that are very different in mood and sensibility that have turned that whole tradition on its head. So this is an obad by Amy, and I'm not going to try to pronounce that last name, Neshukumatahil. I'm not sure how you say it. But anyway, it's beautiful obad. In the dinner I cook for myself tonight, you are an open drawer of cutlery. I've smelled the top notes of butter knives at your shoulder, the tang hidden in the blade of your walk. I need a serving spoon to scoop dal into a cool ceramic, a fork with tines long enough to pierce the skin of the butternut squash rusted in honey juice. Even your hands have become a kind of instrument, delicate enough to slide crab meat out of the shell, sturdy enough to crack a breastbone if need be. Or maybe what I smelled that morning, still full of starlight and crickets when we said goodbye, was the clean coolness of a knife's ricasso, the flat rest for a thumb just before the blade disappears into its handle. Oh my God, what a different kind of feel for this whole bod at parting, but oh my gosh, him as a blade and a knife and the, the ricasso is right after the handle, there is a little flat part before the actual sharp part of the blade starts. What a different kind of leave taking. So she's turned the obad on its head. Now let's look at a nocturne that's very different. This is one of my all time favorite poems by Lee Young Lee. That scraping of iron on iron when the wind rises, what is it? Something the wind won't quit with, but drags back and forth, sometimes faint, far, then suddenly close, just beyond the screen door, as if someone there squats in the dark, honing his wares against my threshold. Half steel wire, half metal wing, nothing and anything might make this noise of saws and rasps a creaking and groaning of bone growth, of body death, marriages of rust or ore abraded. Tonight, something bows that should not bend. Something stiffens that should slide. Something loose and not right rakes or forge itself, forges itself all night. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Oh, that wonderful last lines, something bows that should not bend. And then the final rhyme at the end. So both these poems have turned the sensibilities of a nocturne and an obad on its head. So that's what we're going to do for our next little writing assignment. And um, in fact, to help you with that, oh, hang on, I've got to find a piece of paper here. I thought I might even read a very short obada I wrote at a, um, at a workshop. So what I want you to do is we're gonna, we're gonna turn the, if it's a positive, we're gonna turn it into a negative experience. You can work with what you've already got, you can, or you can start a new one. Um, you can use those images that you already have, but take look at them from another angle. Or you can find one or two specific um, items in like um, Amy did with cutlery and crickets and make that into a metaphor, a simile. Um, 
So one way to do this, to ease into it, if you're not sure, is to think about some um, um, emotional fraught time in your life and to write from that, looking at that as an obad or a nocturne, to use that as a starting point. So here's a little short one I wrote um, called Obad Without Regret. You expected a penitent kneeling at the altar of you, got instead a bod whose sin was to alter your belief in your infallibility. You struck, who struck the nightly communion aside, who pushed your hands into her sex, intoning, blessed be this, the blood of myself, who said, wash your own damn feet, who strode through the dark chancel of your hypocrisy, canceled her piety, lifted her skirts, and confessed herself into the light. So a very different kind of feel for an obad, but a leave taking nevertheless. So I'm gonna give you another, let's see, it's 1230. I'm gonna give you another nine, 10 minutes, not quite as long as the first time, because hopefully you've got something to work with. And I want you to think about turning it on its head or using a metaphor or a simile from your first bit of writing and expanding on that. And then afterward, we'll do some sharing of this. Okay, so let's get started.
Okay, about one more minute. So we'll start wrapping it up. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes, so I hope um, you had something you could work with. Um, what we'll do now is we'll spend, oh, maybe another seven, eight minutes or something like that sharing. So it's a maximum we can do. Um, I'd like to get the third bit of the exercise in that we're going to do with what you've written. Um, so if there's a couple of people who'd like to share, and as I said, it doesn't have to be long, and we know we know because this is rough writing, writing right now, we're not going to critique it. It doesn't need to be polished. Anybody want to volunteer? And I can't see everybody, so let's see. You may have to unmute yourself and just say, yeah. Yay. Okay, who's that? It's Paul. Paul. Okay. All right, go ahead. Okay. Mine is... A bard with the velvet and moon, brown velvet shut tightly, a stray, a waif of light. Strikes a Persian rug so late at night, the fringe tassels mimic the neon light, gazing clearly by the window, so quiet, so late, so alone. A spotlight on aloneness, a highlight, a plight of oneself. Mm. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> kind of the internal rhyme there and throughout. Mm -hmm. And somebody else want to share? I can do a, a one piece of positive and one of negative. Oh, that okay. sounds good, Sharon. Go ahead. Here's uh, the negative. Oh Lord, am I up to this movement into a, a muscle, bone, brain, falling into military drill? into leaving the glory of inertia, the freedom of not having to, and launching body and intention into the energy of day, into to-do lists and all the obligation morning brings. And here's the positive. Oh, yes, my bones rejoice, tired of prone, rising into movement, shucking off the gray shroud of inertia for the bright shawl of upward leaping. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sharon, which one do you like best? Which one speaks to your heart? Oh, that the first one, of course. <laughs> Thank oh, you yeah. for sharing. Uh, another one, anybody? I'll go. My name is Bonnie. Okay, Bonnie, go ahead. I can turn my... Not turn her over. Well, we can guess when you get going. So. <laughs> yes. Um, waking to sugary grit. Corners of mouth. Sweat dried behind knees within elbow kinks. Night has left her throat raw as if morning coffee served at a boil. She's been wordlessly, tirelessly screaming since midnight. Oh, oh. Oh. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Oh. We have time for maybe one more. Anybody? I'll share, Shoda. Okay. Okay. I can't see everybody. Uh, my name is Mary Ann. Okay. Oh, yeah. Then, Hi. Okay. Hi, Shoda. Uh, it doesn't have a title yet. The, dec the decadence, of re decadence of retirement when no alarm is set, but our limbs are used to flexing before the sky outside, the open window, dawns her parchment cape of rusty light. In the pre-dawn, a moonflower on the nightstand, her body still open to the night. She lamps our way toward one another. Your flat-footedness presses into my dancer's arch, 
I find the shadow of your spine, vertebrae like braille under my blind fingers. I read your slumbering self in the dark. I whisper to you, promising never to be tone deaf in our bed. Lovely, lovely. You guys came up with great stuff in that short amount of time. I'm so impressed. That's cool. Okay. Well, now we're going to move on and we're going to do a little something different with these pieces that you've just done. Well, not different, but we're going to, we're going to shape them a little bit. So let me, um, I'm going to edit. There we go. Okay. So uh, that's the sharing we just did. I want to read uh, another, this is a nocturne and another obad, and I want to look at the way they're organized on the page. I'm very much into structure of poems. I mean, it, it, doing the quick writing is really great for getting ideas and feelings out, but then of course you need to work the piece and see how it's going to end up at the end. So um, this is a poem by James Cruz. I think it was in the Atlantic um, a year or so ago. Every cell in our bodies contains a pore, like a door, which says when to let in the flood of salt ions bearing their charge. But the power in us moves much slower than the current that rushes into wires to ignite the lamp by which I undress. I'm told to undress by sparks that cross the gap of a synapse to pass along the message, it's time for sleep. As I pull back the sheets, ease into bed, I think if I could only look beneath my skin, I'd see my body as alive as Hong Kong, veins of night traffic crawling along the freeways, as tiny faces inside taxis look up from the glow of their phones, sensing that someone is watching. Ooh, I love that. Beautiful. But what he does here is he starts with the internal, the sparks, the, um, the currents, the ion charges in the body as he gets ready for bed. And then he switches and goes out. He, we get all these external images about the life going on, like the little synapses, you know, the, the, the waves between synapses and the taxis. And then he's back again to the internal, the sensing that someone is watching that he is watching, he is aware of what's happening in his body. So I love this um, structure. So this might be one way to think about structuring your poem is to pick out which items are more internal and which items are more external and to kind of move between that. I like to see movement in a poem. Often I will uh, read poems that are just images, but they haven't really connected to anything they haven't really connected to the heart and, or moved in a way that moved me. Okay, so the next poem is by Irene Latham and this is Nobad. That last morning our skin glowed, the pink glow of the newly hatched. And we cried the raw cry lovers make when love is easy, but nothing else is. Years pass and still we question the questions while the answers bend the way time bends in accordion song. The memory of one morning stretching wide as a Montana morning sky. Then the memory of years of heart compressed into the single compression of light cast by a prairie star. This is the song we sing to each other. This is the song that sings us awake in the mornings, all silver tongues and pink light. Oh. Gosh, another just gorgeous, gorgeous poem. But what she's done here is she's used time to first set us in the past, that morning, that last morning long ago. And then time passes, we get a very specific memory. We get all those memories compressed into one item that's happening right now. And then that leads into the present. So she's used time to um, read to organize the poem. Now, when we're writing quickly, a lot of these could just all come, you know, jumble, jumble, jumble in. But um, I'd like you to think now a little bit about how to organize what you've written. Um, is there a, is there a, some natural structure within it that you see by looking at those line lines? And can you move from the internal to the external or 
Uh, can you use time? Another way is to use spirals, to spiral in toward your subject. In other words, to start wider out of your subject and to slowly come in closer and closer and closer to your subject. In a way that Obad poem by Alan Gray, the one about leaving his lover in the bed and then talking about the archipelago of her body, he starts further out. He starts further out with the dawn coming and the curtain sw swaying, and then he comes in to the body of his lover. So can you spiral move in, or can you start at, the, at that point and move outward so that something becomes um, wider as you get away from the subject. Now, we have only uh, about five minutes. <laughs> so I don't think we really have time to um, work on doing this here, but I'd like you to think about that with the pieces you've written today. And um, you can feel free to um, email me um, if you want. Um, thoughts or ideas or something that didn't work, something that did work, you liked with it. And there's um, my contact information. Um, also at that little down at the bottom there, the HTTPS, my blog, I have on there a listing further of um, nocturnes and obads that I really like. So there's about a dozen of each and they're all linked. So you can just click on them and read further if you'd like. Okay, Jamie, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Um, I'm gonna stop my share. Let me escape, stop my share. And there's everybody. Oh, it's so exciting to see all the faces. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it over to Jamie. But one thing, let's, I have one minute before we do. Um, I'm just wondering, this is the first time I've done this particular program and how it worked for you. Anybody have comments or thoughts about that? something I should change. Just unmute and speak up. I thought it's absolutely fab. I loved your prompts, I loved the poetry, and I loved the exercises. I wish you had more time to share. Absolutely okay. brilliant. Thank you so, so much. Okay, good. <laughs> Real practical information I can use today. Oh, good, good. And I hope that you do go back and look at what you've written today, because as I said, you know, it's, it, and I wrote too, and I've got a couple of rough pieces here that I want to do something with. Anybody else have a comment? Okay. I, I think it. it was just, just um, perfect. And I agree with the word practical. Um, sometimes, you know, an hour, you feel like you have so much time, but I loved at least the first two uh, getting us to do and then turn it on its head. Um, and then I love the fact that you've left us with this internal, external, greater, lesser. Um, it's just great. Thank you so much. Good. Yeah, but I love some of those poems. I was doing some research to get ready for this. And I just, oh, that poem by Lee Young Lee and the poem about Cutler and Crickets. Oh, my God. Such great, great poems. And what's lovely about this form is you can do kind of your own thing within it. And, but still gives you structure. So that's wonderful. Um, yep, so I got to see some chat comments there. Okay, so now I'll hand it over to Jamie who has something yet to say about Hope at Hand. And thank you all for coming. <laughs>